Hello, today we're going to look at energy change of reactions. Now, to help us understand this idea, it's linked to the uh, topic of endothermic and exothermic reactions, but to help us understand, we're going to take a look at this reaction here. So we've got hydrogen and oxygen reacting to give water. There's the balanced formula equation for that reaction. But we can also take a look at what's happening in terms of the particles, the atoms and the molecules in this reaction. So we can see we have two molecules of hydrogen reacting with one molecule of oxygen to make two molecules of water. Now a key and important thing to know here is that energy is needed to break bonds in the reactants and energy is released when making bonds in the products. And that is going to be the key thing to help us work out the energy changes for the reactions that we're about to look at. So let's break it down a little bit more. Here we've got our reactants and energy is needed to break the bonds here, as you can see. So those bonds are being broken with the inputs of energy. And those particles are now apart, so the atoms are apart, and they can be reformed into the products. In this case, the product is water. So we need um, well, energy is released. Energy is released when making the bonds. So as those bonds are made in the water molecules, energy is released. And you can see from the size of the arrows that we have, in this case, more energy released when making bonds compared to the energy needed to break the bonds. So in this case, we have what's called an exothermic reaction. This reaction is exothermic because more energy is released from making the bonds than breaking the bonds. We call this exothermic. Now, we could have a different situation where the reaction is endothermic, but let's just take a look at a summary of how we figure out an endothermic or exothermic reaction. So, if more energy is released from making bonds than used for breaking bonds, in this case we've got reactants and products, we just took a look at this, there's more energy used in breaking the bonds than released from making the bonds in the products, this reaction is exothermic. If, on the other hand, we have a different scenario where there is less energy released from making the bonds than used for breaking the bonds, well, we could take a look again. We've got our reactants and our products. We could see there is more energy used for breaking than released from making bonds. In this case, we have an endothermic reaction. And as we know, endothermic reactions take in heat energy from the surroundings. Okay, so we could just make a nice uh, little neat slide of that. It might be worth making a note of this because it will be very helpful for the questions we're about to do. Okay, so let's take a look at actually calculating the energy change of reactions using what we call bond energies. So here we have our reaction that we've just looked at. Uh, it's balanced for us and we can look at it in this way, but we can also look at the reaction in terms of the bond energy. So we've got our hydrogen which is uh, H2, we can see it's bonded together by our line that shows a covalent bond. We've got our oxygen and we can see the bond holding the two uh, atoms of oxygen together for O2, that's also a covalent bond, it's a double bond. And for the last one we've got bonds holding the hydrogens to the oxygen in our water. Okay, now we need one more bit of information to help us do this and that's something called the bond energies. Okay, so these are the values I'm just highlighting there. These are called the bond energies. And we can use these to do a calculation. So these are our bond energies. And the calculation we want to do is based on energy changes in this reaction. So let's just make a quick note of what the question might be. Here we go, calculate the energy changes in the reaction. So let's make a bit of space and have a go. So the key point there that I've written down is that the energy change equals the energy needed to break the bonds minus the energy released from making bonds. Make sure you are talking in terms of energy needed and energy released. So how do we do this? Well, we need to look at the uh, bonds and the energies in the bonds. So let's start with the hydrogen. We've got from our information there, we've got 436 kilojoules per mole for our hydrogen. But remember, we've got two hydrogens, it's 2H2, two so it's 436 times 2. We also have bonds being broken in the oxygen, so there's our oxygen, and the energy shown there is 498, so we have 498 for our one molecule of oxygen being broken apart into the atoms. We can calculate that in a moment, and then we need to look at the energy released from making the bonds. So that's the bonds in the H2O, and we've got HO bonds, and in H2O you can see we've got two of them. So for every molecule of water, we've got two HO bonds. So that would be 464 times 2. 
but be careful because we've got two H2Os, so we would need to multiply by two again. So we'd have to have times two for that molecule as well. Now, if we do our calculation, we find we have 1370 minus 1856. And if we do that calculation, 1370 minus 1856, we get minus 480. Now that minus at the uh, for the uh, final answer indicates to us that this is an exothermic reaction. The minus number tells us this is an exothermic reaction. Okay, and if you remember from previously, we said that if the energy release from making bonds is bigger or is more than the energy needed to break the bonds, then that's also another way of telling that it's an exothermic reaction. Okay, so in this case, we've got more energy released from making the bonds than energy needed to break the bonds. Okay, it's important you get that terminology right. It's energy needed to break bond, bonds and energy released from making bonds. Okay, so here's the last one. You can have a go at this for yourself. So this is a reaction of methane with chlorine. Don't worry about too much about the names of the products and the reactants here. This is balanced. So you can go ahead and give that a go. But if not, we can go through or we can put the answer on the board and on the screen and you can check your answer. This is again an exothermic reaction because we've got a negative number for our final answer. It might be worth just making a note that if it was an endothermic reaction, if it was an endothermic reaction, the graph would look like this or the sketch graph would look a little bit like this. The red energy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactants. Okay, so this is it. Energy changes in reactions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.